Second game of the day was a clash of the Titans. This is the number one seeded Central Florida Patriots took on the only unbeaten team remaining, the Wabash Valley Warriors. After a pair of base hits by Correa and Jorge, Valentin gets his team on the board, turning on a 1-0 Aiden Deacons pitch over the outfield wall, and that one's gone for a three-run blast and an early three-run lead. Wabash looking to answer back, and that brings us to the play of the day, brought to you by Qdoba. Bonamalu Jr. gets a hold of a holiday 0-1 pitch and gets it in the left, but then it's misplayed by the defense, and Bonamalu Jr., with some smart base running, makes it all the way around to third, setting up an RBI single the very next batter. Setting up an RBI single by the very next batter, Nicholas Williams. And before you know it, we have a tie game on our hands after Jellison smokes one out to near dead center, and the Warriors continue to bash, tied at three apiece. Later, one run Patriot lead, but again, the Warriors, they're able to hang with them. Patriot defensive miscue allows another run across the plate. Tied at four apiece now. And this game would continue to go back and forth. Wabash starting to pull away at 10 to six, but one big swing by Central Florida's John Morant, and we're back to back and forth. Nine to 10, Wabash. Now, when I say back and forth, I mean back and forth, as in back and forth all the way to extras, where for a while it looked like we might have a late night pitcher's duel. Isaac Swell gets out of a frame there with the punch out, but his counterpart Miranda was missing bats as well. Warriors with an undefeated tournament record still on the line, looking to walk off the pass. And Luke on line with runners on, runners waved home, throws on line, there's a play at the plate, and he's out. And that is continued. Wabash wants a second shot at it. Auden gets the green light. He breaks for home. Once again, the throw is on the line. It's not exactly where it needed to be for the backstop to apply the tag, and he's safe. Later, Pats take the lead on Taribo deep fly that allows Correa to tag up, and that might have broke the back and forth chain. From there, they pull away. Next batter, Hector, drives in another. Right after that, Gilliams adds one more, and that was enough for them to hold on and secure the win in the final of 19 to 12 in the longest game in Super World Series history. I've been, I've been telling people all year when they ask, how's your club this year? I go, we got some talent. We got some talent. We're going to be okay. But tonight, they, they – and, and you got to have some heart to win 54 games or whatever it is. And and they showed me tonight with their – you know, with the game on the line, um, just how much heart they had. That that was – that was tough. We were – our players were dropping like flies. Um, Lori goes down, and they're probably both concussed. Uh, Kata came out of the game. Uh, <clears throat> Bracky just battled through it. Um, uh, Poppy Toribio tells me he's not. He's thinks he broke his hand again, but then he he goes up and hits the, the go ahead sack fly in the whatever inning it was. How many innings long was the game? I have no idea. Too many. Twelve. Twelve. Way too many. Twelve. <laughs> It didn't seem like an inning under 15. Hey, you know what? Man. The only thing that matters is we're playing for national championship on Saturday. That is the only thing that matters. Yep.